Of course, there's an interesting article which you've seen about um, Walkwood. Uh, Walkwood uh, yeah. uh, so you have the. Um, <laughs> well, he knows that the state can see the this is the people we have to last month and to take in our I'm not going to get another muffin, I'm going to get a quick cut. Yeah. Okay, welcome along to welcome along to session three of our spring series. Um, today we're very fortunate to have Richard Leary over from Australia. Um, our um, Richard is our CEO of Australasia for NAI Harcourts very experienced in the uh, commercial industrial business and uh, today he's going to do his presentation on, on killer presentations. This is it being session three, the whole series is designed to actually uh, establish you in an area, get you up and running. Last week we covered some of the legal legal issues on leasing. Um, this, this week um, is about securing the business and next week's um, session with Hayden Duncan will be on running the campaign. So without any further ado, welcome I'm Richard Leary, and, um, and we look forward to the next hour. I think we're getting a lot of great information. Thanks, Greg. Right, it's good to be over, and um, good to be online as well. So we are broadcasting right across Australia, and also in New Zealand, so Invercargill, Perth, everywhere. So if I do make funny mistakes, I know it's going live out there. But hey, it's great to be here. Um, today, we're going to run things slightly different, because it's a matter of learning and changing what we do. So I'll just click that on go. So what we're going to cover is mindset and why campaigns. We're also going to go prior to the presentation and what we need to do. We're going to go into the presentation and then we're going to go into scripts and closing. So some core things there. But as we move through those four key points, we're actually going to stop at the end of each of them. And I want you to change seats or if you're in your office, please get up, stand, move around um, and then sit back down and write down a couple of points you've learned. So in this room here, stand up when we have a break. You've got a minute just to change seats and tell the person beside you what you've learned out of that section. So we'll have four of those breaks. They'll only be for a minute, but it's a matter of it's a matter of digesting what you learn and what's being broadcast because it's, hey, there's so much there we can do and we can all do it better. So how do we do it? I wanted to start on a on a, just a little story. Um, these are these are my kids. So that's Spencer on the left. That's George in the middle, and Molly's the smallest. And I took them to Bly Bly Cable Park. Um, it's just an hour north on the Sunshine Coast of, um, of Brisbane there. And George, who's the middle one here, right in the middle, goes, hey, Dad, I really want to do this. I really want to do it. So I took them, to the, took them there. We got going. They got lessons. This is their second go. Now, George got up on the first go, went straight over onto his face. Second time, he got up with help and got going. Third time, he did it unassisted. Now, those of us who have been water skiing and have done hot starts, high speed, it is a cable spinning around at high speed. I'm just going to play you a short video because it is fascinating. This is George. Thank 
And he's off. Three goes. Now, what happens if we view what we do like that? You know, as a child. You know, I think we sit there sometimes and we go, God, I stuffed up a submission or a presentation and, ah, oh, God, it hurts and it does. But if we viewed it like that and just went, right, crash helmet on, off we go, I'm going to do it. And what happens? One, two, three. And he's away. And I'm sitting there going, far out. <laughs> That's so quick. But if we viewed it like that, man, we'd change our businesses. We would actually change overnight on what we do. You can see all the ski jumps down here. So you've got all the wakeboard jumps and the sliders, and it goes all the way around. And all of this is different levels. So you could view that as commercial property. You know, those are different vendors. Those are clients. Those are different skills to sell down a development, to list a $10 million property, sell it, or a, or a $500,000 property. They've all got different challenges along the way. And he's just started. So it's very important starting the motion and to keep going with it. Because if you just sit there and do it and do it and do it, you will you will succeed. So get up and go. You know, Dave Lane's a great example of it. Missed the presentation, went back and did another and secured it. You know, so it's just that repetition. Learning from mistakes is critical. Because at the end of the day, it's a numbers game. You know, we sit there, we work hard. We can't get emotional about it. There's numbers. The more people we meet, the more people we sit down with, the more things we can learn and adapt and change. You'll never win everything. You never will because it is a people game. You know, it's pe we deal with people. Personalities is part of what we deal with every day. And they'll like you. They won't like you. They'll like the way you do business. Sometimes you'll say the wrong things. You know, you can't do everything 100% right the whole time. And that comes for the opposition out there as well. They make mistakes, which means you can get advantages in there and, and assist the client at a much better service level. Keeping it simple. I think that's a big, big one. We all get complicated and confused and busy on people's issues and the issues of what real estate. But at the end of the day, we sell buildings. That's what we do. It's land, it's buildings, it's four walls, it's a floor, a ceiling. Keep it simple. All we do is find the solution for people. And we get caught up with everything else, commissions and this and have we done that. Keep it simple. Send to yourself. Because campaigning is actually quite simple. All you're doing is providing your client with a solution. It's as simple as that. You know, taking responsibility for what you do. Just working harder. But the last point in that is think like a vendor. Because if you go into a meeting and you're meeting any client out there, think what he's thinking or she think what that person's thinking because if you can think what they're thinking you can answer the questions they want you know so far i've got to pay this person a fee is that person worth me paying the fee can they get the result why are they so good that's what you've got to get across to people but it is that mindset get up and go it's that it's that george thing get up and go put your crash helmet on and just go because you don't learn without mistakes so why campaigns? You know, why do them? And it's critical to why are we in business? Hey, it's, a, it's money, it's a business, it's a job, it's a fantastic job. But it does underwrite your business. And it underwrites it more than, more than you realise. Because if you sit down and you focus on campaigns, you can run four to six campaigns a year. That'll bring you in roughly around about one hundred and fifty dollars to $200,000 of commission on an average. Then you can be out there doing all your different bits and pieces, your general listings or your open in Australia, um, and you can be tinkering around with these developments and you might hit a big sale, you might hit a couple of big sales, but you'll do other things as well. But if you underwrite your business, you're going to make a lot more money and you're going to have a much more steady year than just going in and working on general or open listings. Otherwise, just hit and miss. Control that stock. The best part of the business, uh, that's a critical one. When we're in our game and we're out selling, what is the best part? Is it the sale? Is it when you're sitting there stressed, you're going to get a deal together? You know, when you actually think about it, what is the best part of the business? Or is it when you're actually selling, and that is selling to a client when you're sitting there and you're actually saying what you do? And that's doing a presentation. 
you know, you're going through the key points on what you offer and the benefit to use you and NAI Harcourts, your business. That is actually the best part of the business. The sale's stressful. Getting out there, finding listings is stressful. But learn to enjoy the presentation because it actually is the best part of the business. And have fun with it. Your vendors will actually like it when you know your points. In the game, it is the you know the most highest dollar value productivity time you can do. So if you're out doing open listings, hey, you've got no chance of getting a sale or the odd thing slips through. But if you secure stock, you've got of actually getting that out the door and getting paid. So it's a very high dollar dollar activity to focus on. It's profile, it attracts clients, they see you. I myself have one business just off doing campaigns, two campaigns at once, had a feature tutorial, phone rang, instantly said, hey Richard, you're the guy in the marketplace at the moment, can you sell our property? That was a $4 million sale. I didn't have to pitch for it, he saw me, so it attracts business. So you use it, leverage off it. You get more committed clients, they're motivated to sell. You know, all these benefits that if you underwrite your business with it, it's, it, it does amazing things for where you're going in the future. Because you can make a huge amount of money in this business as long as you just do that. The deadline is the critical thing in it because it gets an outcome. Whether auction, tender, deadline, private treaty, whatever it is, it's a matter of having a deadline. It closes clients. So our first break, if we could all just please stand. Um, uh, I just want you to swap seats, sit down on another seat, and then just tell the person beside you in 30 seconds each what you've learned from that, and then we're going to start again. <laughs> all righty let's keep moving so now we're going to move to the second part which is prior to the presentation and a lot of this is really really critical because the pre presentation is one part of it but the prior to is in everything you do prior to to actually nail that presentation. It's all that research prior to doing it. But if you don't have a clear view of actually what you do and what you provide a client, how are you going to sell what you need to sell? So, you know, above all, what do we do? We assist our vendors in reaching a successful outcome for their asset. That's what we do. We're solution providers, we're solution focused. That's all we do. We're there to help them and take the pressure away from them. And that covers research, price, marketing, obviously a sale or a lease, it could be a business. It's delivering a better service. Technology, network, you know, local, global, national, databasing. What are you, skilled negotiators? You keep your client fully informed. And above all, as I touched on, you're providing a solution for your client. If you go into that meeting going, I'm solution based, I'm not focused about a fee, because a vendor will always pay you a fee if you provide them a solution. You know, you could say, it could just be the guy down at the tire shop, changing your tires. You know, you're happy to pay him a fee to change your tires. You want the best product. Someone will pay, everyone will pay you a fee. They don't want to do you out of a fee. They want to pay you a fee. They just want an answer for what they're getting for that fee. So everyone wants to pay a fee, so you've got to be clear on what you do. If you're clear on that, you can sit down on any presentation and say, this is what we do for you. So prior to the pitch, and this is when you're listed general or you're just in your first meeting or whatever it may be, and sometimes generals or opens go on for a long period of time, the critical things are to uncover, and it's uncover, uncover, uncover. You know, what is the motivating factor? Why do they need to sell? Why do they need to lease? 
Maybe they want to sell, but the price won't meet the market. So what is the other options there? What will actually get them a successful outcome? You've got to lock it down and understand their needs. You know, dig down. Remember we're solution based, not commission focused, solution based. Make sure you're talking to decision makers. And I can't stress that enough. I can personally say I've wasted time, be time before talking to the wrong people. And I know everyone in the room would have or online because we can think we're talking to the right people and we find out actually there's another couple of directors who actually make the decision. I know in commercial sometimes that, hey, it's not always relevant because they may have to report to a board or a listed property company. Hey, there's differences, but you've got to work through it and understand who you're reporting to. Get detail, gather information. Part of it is know your market. You know, what are the competitors charging? If it's a big $5 million sale or a, or a half a million dollar sale, what are the fees out in the market? And who else is pitching there? You know, have to ask the question, is someone else coming to see you? Uh, just ask them. Or have you seen anyone else? Or just you'll find out and then you know how to tailor your pitch and what to ask. And always be solution based. Open questions. Open are uh, critical to everything we do. And we all know them, but the challenge is do we use them in every conversation? I guarantee you we don't. We get caught up telling them about what we did in the weekend and trying to form a relationship. Just provide a service and a solution and use your where's, what's, how's, you know, who, why did you buy it, why are you selling it, what are you going to do when you sell it, when did you buy it, how long have you owned it. There's actually 20 questions there that are simple and you'll find out so much detail that it's scary. And I guarantee we all miss stuff. You know, it could be someone who come and see me after this and say, Richard, so where did you fly in? What did you do? How long are you here? Um, where are you going to next? Why did you make this trip? You know, that's a 10 minute conversation. And it's really easy just to talk to people when you're finding information out. So use these little tricks because that'll help you when you're moving forward. This is something I'm really passionate on as personality types because we misjudge people and you've got to have the ability in a presentation to be ready for that. So what are the personalities types? And these are the do's and don'ts on each. You've got the driver who's very, very task orientated. You've got the amiable, which is obviously the relationship person. You've got the expressive, big picture. And then you've got the analytical, who are the accountants and number focused. You know, you can work out who these guys are and there are certain key things to do and focus on when you're meeting them and when you're talking to them. You can't go in and do a, do a full presentation to a driver. You just cannot. You've got to go far out. I, I'm going to put together this big presentation. Am I putting together the right presentation for them? Or you may get to the presentation, you've done all this work and suddenly you realise this guy's a driver. You need to change what you're doing and you need to make it half an hour or an hour, 15 minutes in some cases. You know, is the person analytical? You know, provide facts. They want detail and I'll ask you all those questions. Don't try to close them too early. It's little things like that. Take the time. They just want detail, detail, detail. And I can't tell you how many times I've gone to meetings where I've thought the person is warm and friendly and I've gone into that relationship and going into that meeting going, hey, how are you doing? No, oh, no, we're going to do this. Then I suddenly realise they're actually not. They're analytical and they want detail, detail, detail. So you've got to be ready to change and adapt. But if you can work out those four personality types, you can really, really nail presentations. And everyone's got a bit of everything in there, so bear that in mind as well. So they're not all just pigeonholed. They'll be a bit of everything, but one part will be their strongest suit. You know, expressive. Hey, don't steal your thunder. You know, call little parts which really matter when you're presenting because if you go in and present this by that you're going to miss out you're not going to connect so it's a real catch when you're meeting people what is that person what does he want and we have all personality types so these are all little things and this is helps you how you nail a great presentation and one business above all in helping your conversation and your credibility you've got to be an expert and this comes back to Greg's first session. We're on growing your business, farming and working through it. You've got to be an expert. When you're an expert, you add value. You add value to your clients and not just your clients, to your team. 
your office team, your national team, your international team. They all do different things. You know, Grant brings a whole lot of different parts into the business and he's got certain skills that you all in this room should be leveraging. You should be leveraging Dave's or Nicholas's skills, you know, his Asian connections. You know, leverage each other because that's how you become an expert. You can't be an expert at everything. Add value off each other. You know, know what's being sold on the market. And that's by farming, you'll know. Average time of sale, how long it takes to lease. Hey, everything can be sold and leased really, really quickly. Can, everything. You'll sit there and go, no, it can't. Well, it can because it's just price. Something dollars can be leased tomorrow for $30,000 or fifty. Go to the neighbour and say, hey, you can save this if we can lease this for $30,000. They'll go, oh, all right, that makes sense from the business. I will go and lease that, subject to a few things. But it's not that hard, it's just the price. <coughs> Are they willing to wait for that time to get that right tenant or pay market, the market level, or do they want to do it quicker? Average time, you know, properties currently on the market, area statistics, zoning, be an expert. Because that's how you move forward, that's how you help people. You're solution based. Above all, that's really it. The key is educating clients, helping them. Be totally transparent and help them with everything you know, from general listings through to sole agencies, through to tenders, through to options. Explain the differences. They actually want to know. <clears throat> they want to know and they want you to help. And if you've got grey there or it's not clear, they'll, you'll create mistrust and they will simply not work to you. So if they want to know it, just tell them. Those are the four questions that every vendor wants to know. Without fault, it, those there are just critical to it. You know, what's my property worth? How long will it take? What will it cost me? And what can you do that others can't? So in every presentation, you've got to answer those. And you can use them in your presentation. But those are your four critical parts of a presentation. And they're what every client wants to ask. And that's just sitting there like a vendor, like your client. Hey, what are those critical things? They are them. So when you get to a presentation, this isn't the presentation before it, but when you get there, there are certain words to use. And Dave knows this quite well now. Um, the biggest word is benefit. Use it for everything you say. Because what, why are you there? What are you doing? Just add benefit into it. The benefit for you is this. Why am I telling you this? Because the upside is this, which gives you a benefit of this. If you're solution-based, always use those, because all they want is the benefit. It could be vendor-paid marketing. What's the benefit? Why do it? Use the benefit 20 times in a presentation. People, that's why they're there. They want to know what the upside, the benefit for them. What's the outcome? That's all they want to do. They want a successful outcome. You know, use um, we, a team, never I. You know, it's never I. It's always, hey, we're, we're bigger than this. It's not just about me. Yeah, you know, little things like that that you can really take people on a journey with your vendor. Hey, we're helping. We're going to work with you together on this. We need this information or we as a team. You know, what do we do? We take the stress away from our client we go and market the property and we bring them, present them with offers at a later time so they can make a decision if they so choose, wish to accept that. That's what we do and over that time we educate them where the market is because they'll be by far the most expensive. They'll be the buyer for that property because they own it. So work out exactly what we do. You know, and it's just use the word benefit and lots of different ways. You know, upside value, there's heaps of them. But just critical things. Right, that's another 10 minutes, so please all stand. We've got a minute. If you could please share something you learned out of that with one or two other people in the room for a minute, and we'll get underway again. Yeah.
All righty, let's get moving again. So we're halfway through. A lot of information there, a lot of those points I can go through in a lot more detail. So I'm trying to pack a fair bit in. But now we're going to move forward to actually the pitch and how we do that and what we need to do to nail that presentation because it is critical in getting vendor paid advertising. And a lot of it is simple. You may think welcome them, answer all their questions. But the reality is if you don't get them in the room, make it friendly, relaxed, and then say, hey, the point you're here and what we want to answer is this. And if you've got any questions, please let us know because the last thing I want you to do is leave this room and you go and make a decision that I didn't explain to you clearly. Your worst case scenario is they go and do something that you didn't give them the opportunity or you didn't say was an advantage and why they didn't use you. So make sure you're really clear. I want you to go away with more information that you came in with. Be really clear on it. That's why they're there. They want to know, so just really nail it down and be clear. I touched on prior was uncover. It goes in the presentation as well. Always uncover because what, where, how, who, you, the presentation will change and you'll be able to shorten the presentation if you get to those critical points of what they actually need. Because they may know quite a bit of information that you're not aware of. They may want that. They may be just sitting there listening to what you think and how much you actually do know. Make it relaxed is critical. You know, it's that establish rapport, establish trust. They're critical. And if you fail to do those, you're gone. Next. And a lot of us forget to do that. A lot of us think we're, they'll never deal with anyone else. They'll deal with us, with me, because I've got that relationship. That relationship can fall over with one incidency little mistake that you didn't mean to lie or say something that was a mistruth, but you could, and you can miss, you've lost that trust. You've lost that rapport. So you've got to build on it. You've, people will not sign with you if you don't nail those two points. Establish you'll be expert, add value, solution-based. Now we're going to work through the presentation in a moment because there are key parts in that to work through. But always bear in mind, your solution based is not about the fee. So what is the benefit? Use those words. What you're looking for is an outcome to do the solution based, solution based, solution based moving forward. Do everything you're going to say you're going to do. No, lock it down. Critical stuff. If you're going to do it, say it. I mean, it's bizarre, but this is stuff when you're in a pitch, it's actually relatively easy. But the problem is we get in the heat of the moment and we start doing our thing and we forget those critical things. And then we leave and we go, oh, wasn't that good? Yeah, high five, brilliant, we'll win that, and some other agency's got it. You've got to take control in that presentation as well. You've got to show leadership. You are the person who's representing their most expensive ass asset in a lot of cases. You're the professional. Be professional. Don't swear, don't relax, don't get too casual. You're there providing a service, and that's what we're all about. That's where this business is going. In Harcourt's group, we want global domination. How do we get there? By being really good at what we do. 
And from what I see out in the marketplace, there's lots of average commercial operators out there. There's a heap of them. So by being really good and detailed, you can blow them out of the water quite easily. And above all, hey, always be asking for the order. You know, always be moving forward. So, and I'll just touch on some of that shortly. So when you're in the pitch, what are the critical things to move forward with and what are they? It's really that order. So if you're in a pitch and you'll notice the submission is that, it's first is you, the client. So it's about them, then it's into a summary. Now the summary is designed to go straight and this is what it's about, this is the time frame, this is budget A and B, bottom of that's commission, it's reasonably quick, but it hits them in the eyes straight away. They can't leave that meeting because they've just started and they know it's an hour. So you've got a whole hour or two hours to go through those key points of why. But you've just, they've actually just suddenly gone, God, there's a $20,000 budget there, or this is going to be this, or this is going to be this. So they're already digesting it. Then you move on to why us. And what we do is an office, national, international, the team, our successes, and and all the detail. You then move on to the method of sale. Now that's critical because that's your deadline to get an outcome. And that's where this here summary starts to come into the price. So you've got the summary on marketing, you come into method of sale, which will be auction, tender, and marketing budget, which is the next one. So you're moving forward. Finally, when you're coming back to a close, you come back to why us and then paperwork. And the why us is to cement effectively um, sorry, over here, why us? And this could be testimonials. This could be you're just locking down those key points of what you're doing. So that's the order of how you move forward around. And I'm going to show you that in a little bit more detail in a second. The presentation, you can mock up your own, but this one is available on Harcourt's one. It is in PowerPoint. It can be edited. You can make a short version of it. You can make a 40 page version of it. You can use it on PowerPoint, you can use it, you can email it out, you can use it as handouts, it's there user friendly for you to use or to work through. So what's in it? And that's only some of the points that are in it because there's a lot. We wanted to have something that was that was there usable, it had the key points in it. You've got the introduction, so you work through the introduction. Then you go straight into the property overview. Key points, one page, bang, 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 detail. Why us? And then that falls into your network. So that's your local network, your office, national, and then international. So that's your reach and some of your big points of difference. And a lot of this is your PODs, your points of difference. Then we start getting into detail. So we're going target market, current market analysis, where that's going. We then go into the SWOT, which is the strengths, opportunities, weaknesses, threats. Critical stuff to know and to do in front of your client and work through. What are the strengths of this property? What are the weaknesses? What are the threats? And nail them. There's threats that this could happen. Put them, put them in there in detail because it will show your client that you're thinking about everything. Opportunities. What are the opportunities? You know, educate the client. Don't be scared if there's an opportunity to redevelopment or change the zoning or something. Put it up there for them. Who's paying your fee? Make it clear because they may say, hey, actually, Richard, that's really smart. Let's hold this for a year and lease it, and then I'll fix up that, and then let's sell it. You go, absolutely. Look, Andrew, that's the best way to go. Do you know what that client's going to do in a year's time? He's going to use you to sell it because you advised them and you weren't looking after a fee in the first instance. So it's being solution-based and helping them. So a really important part. Marketing, going through the marketing in detail, why. So you've had time because you're taking them through the journey. Our promise. You know, that's all that's all in there, four week campaigns, you know, you've um, I've written reports, you know, use it. It has it is there for us to use and it is in the submission. That's effectively your guarantee, but it's our promise. Strategy, tender, auction, deadline, why a deadline, so it gets vendors to make a decision, work through the key parts, marketing investment. So this is where you went through here on marketing, this is where you can market it, this is this, but then this is where it comes down to actual what size ad. Now when you're doing that, make sure you give them the choice and show them and use the word benefit. You know, if you want to go a 10 by 1 or a 10 by 4 or a 10 by 6, the benefit is this. The, the, the negative is obviously the cost. But if you want to, you know, just talk to them about it and work through the, the process. Because if you start working through this, 
you get to a close at the end without even closing. It's, it's, they'll agree to it because you've gone through in detail what it is. Timeline, critical one. Um, you know, Andrew, we can, we can sign this up today. That was just a little close, light close. And then, um, and then um, in a week, we can have marketing prints back to you. And 30 days after that, we can have um, auction date or tender close. 30 days after that, we can have settlement. So by the 14th of August, you can have the money in the bank and then we can go and find you another commercial property. So just give them the time to make decisions because they'll be going, hey, where is it? Right now, Christmas is coming up. So use those dates to your advantage. Otherwise, it's going to roll into the new year and a lot of them will be wanting to sell before Christmas. Um, testimonials, again, why us? You're coming back to this. You're saying, hey, this is why us. Now, these don't need to be your own testimonials. These can be anyone's testimonials. You're part of a team. This is the service we provide. You know, use everybody. So if they're good, use them. Hey, it's what we do. And not just mine, that everybody's. So use them. Just ask if you want to use somebody. So and I know Andrew and Rob have some fantastic ones. So use them. They want to see you win and succeed. They want to see you grow. So leverage it. Success fees. Hey, it's not called commissions. It's not called fees. They are success fees. We don't get paid until a successful sale has been completed and it's unconditional. Really subtle, but really important. You're not getting paid. You might not get paid for six weeks. You might get paid for six months. This is super important. And then summary. So just moving through that slowly. Now, depending on the personality type, you may choose the cut parts. You may want to add more fat in here. You may want to add more comparable sales in the CMA. Look, it's, you tailor it to what suits you and your client. You don't have to just follow this. Work out what suits you, but make sure you go through the process because the process will get you the outcome you're after and it will also get your client the outcome. Vendor paid advertising. You know the old rule of this and there are some sessions that Harcourts run that you can go and attend to upskill all these key points in this. But at the end of the day, the key things are to it uh, it's getting a budget. It's the detail in that budget. It's the why. It's the benefits. Give them a choice and let them make the decision. Do they want to hold it for six months or a year, or do they want to spend some money and get that moving a lot faster? And I know we sit there sometimes and go, oh, it's $6,000. God, that's quite a big budget. The reality is he's got outgoings of $10,000 if it's vacant. He's got a problem. So how does he shorten that problem? So if you explain it on his level or her level, they actually will agree to you and it's a lot easier to do it, but you've got to believe in it. The reality is that you can't tell a secret and that should be one of your main lines you use because it is, you cannot whisper something, you can't. How do you know, you know, we don't have all the buyers, then if I sell it to the guy down the road, is that the best price? The guy down in Fokutani or, you know, up the road here actually doesn't know about it, he may pay you another hundred grand or he may bid and get that person up another hundred grand. Are you willing to forfeit that? And it's those little critical questions that really make a difference. You know, why market in the areas? Why market my property? You know, little things, know them. Put a touch on our promise. Hey, it's their detailed marketing plan. Um, it is obviously new and just been rolled out. Post inspection feedback. But every time you get someone through a property, you know, text them, ring them, let them know. Hey Bill, just had someone through. Um, hey, they liked it. There are a few issues. I'll send you a more report in the when we send out the weekly report and catch up with you. Um, but hey, I don't know where they sit at this time, but I will call them back and find out more. But at least we had someone through. The marketing is working. Just be really real with people. Written progress reports. Hey, weekly meetings, um, marketing meetings, and all offers are presented in writing. Hey, that goes without saying, really. Right, end of the third part, please stand again, or if you're in the office, please grab a drink, walk around your office. If you're with some people, please um, share what you've learned in the last 10 minutes. Thank you. So what'd you get out of that?
is this all righty and to the last segment so these are what we're going to cover now is some of the closing techniques and actually getting but if you're doing a presentation and you're working your way through it, it's actually a natural progression to close. It actually works right through because you're answering those questions. You're gaining trust, you're gaining rapport. So all you've got to do is just simply say, hey, let's move forward with this now. When shall we start? Just subtle things. People say, oh, well, let's get going. All right, let's sign the paperwork. If you fail to do you know, empathy, trust, rapport, you're not going to get there. Show respect to your clients, knowledge, skill. It just it, it's it moves you forward to get an outcome without you even realizing if you do your job well. And the value you are you add, which I touched on at the very start, was what do you do? So what are the methods of, of closing? You know, what are the key parts of actually asking for the order? First one is ask. You know, just simply ask the question. Are you happy for me to proceed on your behalf? Just Hey, are you happy, Andrew? Are you happy for us to move forward? You know, it's 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 that simple when you get to the end. Second one is obviously direct. Perhaps we should do the paperwork. So a lot more subtle, little word, little word changes. But also adding in the now. Assumptive close and trial close are the next two. So they're the four different closes. But effectively, and I show you a couple of the assumptive and the trials. Just ask. If you go through the process really well, just ask them the question. Hey, let's move forward. Let's sign the paperwork now and get this happening for you. You know, and, and we sit there going, oh God, I don't want to ask. If you actually do your presentation well, it's really easy because you actually do it anyway without realizing you've got the agency there. Hey, they, they're there for a reason. Assumptive closing. So this is an idea of a couple of examples of assumptive closing and what those look like. So something would be suggest, hey, what day should we? What day is better for us to meet to get together next week to discuss which day is most convenient for you to meet on what we're going to do, Monday or Thursday or Wednesday or Thursday. So you're you're being an assumptive closer, suggestion, trying to get them to make a decision. Oh yeah, that makes sense. And how about we do that on Wednesday? Yeah, great. What time? Two or four p.m. So just moving it forward. Next one, how about I come back to you? How about we get together next week or come back to you with the marketing budget or the marketing proofs for your approval? You know, it's it's that simple. You're trying to get that vendor to agree to a next time with you. Once you agree that time, you're moving forward to a close. You don't ask things like that. You're not moving forward to an end result. Trial closing. Now I'm a big one at this and I use it all the time every every day and even now. You know, when I'm sitting down with and we're talking to getting someone on board or we're looking at opening a new office, I'll actually repeat what they're saying to me. So what you're saying to me, Rob, is and repeat what they just said. So you will proceed or you're happy to proceed if we can sort out the vendor paid advertising. 
or if we can prove to you that we have an international global network, you're saying you'll come on board and join us. So you're getting to the root of the problem. Identify what they're saying no to. Just straight in there. Don't be scared by it. Just straight in there. What are you saying no to? And you'll be really surprised that generally that isn't the problem. It'll be something else. But sometimes they say yes, and then you know exactly what you need to do. So opportunities. Are you happy that we have the skills, the network, to achieve a successful result for you? You know, that's, that's just, are you happy? Are you, in detail, happy for us to move forward? Oh, Richard, I'm not sure. Oh, what aren't you sure about? And just tell me, because I don't want you to leave this meeting, me not explaining something in detail so you fully understand. You know, just ask them the question. Think like a vendor. What do they want to know? If we can come to agreement on the marketing budget today, are you happy to proceed? You know, is that what's holding them back? Oh, yes. Um, so you're happy with everything. You're happy with the network. You're happy with our services. You're happy with our team. We can do this. Critical things. I can send these out, by the way, because they are, if you learn these, and they're, they're quite easy, you can have them on a little note paper in front of you, or just a suggestion on them, they really help you moving forward with things because you get to the root of problems. Commission. Hey, one of the joys of our business, getting a fee out of it. So really what the commission comes down to is you've got to know what your competitors are charging. You've got to know the detail in there. You've got to believe in the value and what you bring to the table. That's critical to getting a fee. Know why people ask to negotiate fees. You know, why do they? Because you've got to overcome those and use scripts. And I'm going to share a couple of scripts with you in a moment on what you can do. And there are only a couple of suggestions. You will use them in your own words. You know, scripts are there. Use them in your own words. Don't copy them word for word. Use them for you because we're not all the same. And they'll just come out differently, but just learn what you're trying to say. Reduction requests. Hey, why do they do it? They believe we're all the same. And they're always negotiable. They have evidence, so they've already seen a pitch of another agent charging less. You know, those are the reasons. The third one's quite simple. They're just trying to achieve money and move on more money. And that's pretty logical. So that's an easy one to overcome. But these here, you need to know, so you need detail. You need detail. So what is a suggested way to do the forward? This is a great suggestion. The commission is a fee for service payable only when a successful result on your property is achieved. To achieve a successful possible, we re you'll, requ you'll require a full service skill our, a full service, our skill and our knowledge, as well as our local, national and international team. What is it that you don't see? Value on. So it's, it's, it's a service, for, it's, it's, it is a fee for that. It's exactly that. Second one. I suppose you're thinking that every agent will achieve the same price. On that basis, I suppose you're thinking you'll do it, you're trying to find the agent for the lowest fee. Instead of actually working with someone who understands your building, your asset, has a strong team and a strong network and, and can really add value to your business or your asset. You know, little things like that, just that's a critical one, but word it in your own words. You know, if you need to take a photo of it because it's that is what you do. You're not average. That is the critical part there. This is what you do which makes a difference. You actually understand their property and you're looking after their business, their asset, to provide them a solution. You know, great scripts and stuff please use, but use in your own words. Hey, once you've moved through and once you've done your presentation, you've covered those comments, you know, follow-up is critical. And I mean not just a general follow-up. Do everything you're saying you're going to do. Everything. You know, follow up at agreed time and date for those trial closes. Shall we meet here? Make sure you do. Provide detail. Send a thank you card. Thank you for your time. 
hey, I know you just spent two hours out of your day to come and see us. I hope we add added value. We'd love to work with you. We would love to be of assistance to you to resolve your, your issues or how we resolve that. Just word it how you wish to word it. If you miss out, and you will, you'll constantly miss out. Don't get upset. It's like that video that I started on. Just up, go. Whack, up, go. Push your crap back, crash pad on and go. But find out why. And if you don't find out why, you're going to fall in the same hole over and over again. And it's easy to find out why. Just ring them up, take them out for coffee, and ask them the question. And no, don't do it aggressively. Oh, God, I'm so disappointed I missed out on that. Don't do that. Take them out and say, hey, Andrew, look, I, I see you've gone with um, another company. Hey, that's brilliant. I'm really growing my business. and really focused on growing my business. Can you please tell me, because I'd really appreciate it what I did and what, or what we did or how we could get better or how I get better to grow my business. It re would really be really helpful. And when you're sincere, they'll actually say, well, the reason we went there is because of this and actually that agent is a friend with my wife and blah, 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 and you'll actually find out the real reason. Or they say, hey, they had a bit of network and then you say, well, didn't I cover that in my presentation? And maybe you didn't. So uncover, uncover. Don't get upset because it's a job of of Knox, but that's what gives you the ability to make millions of dollars in fees and knowing millions of dollars in fees. So we're hardcore. Hey, get into it, make it happen. Hey, the end of the day is what it comes down to is what's holding you back. You know, it's George on that board. You know, where is he? He's he was here. He's got to go to here to hit those big sliders. And we're all somewhere here. How do we get to here? How do we get to be that top office or that top operator in your area, in the CBD, in north of Brisbane, in Perth? Learn, use the team, go and talk to each other, network, get better. Don't get afraid of mistakes. Presentations will open up business though. You'll control stock and you will grow a fantastic business. So with that, I, I thank you very much. That's the uh, that's the four sections of today, and I'll hand it back to um, back to Greg. Hey, thanks, Richard. I think that was um, that was a whole lot of great information there, and we can use that to grow our businesses. Um, interesting. Some of the scripts that Richard is talking about there, uh, we've talked about them before. The key thing with any script is that you actually adapt it to what you want to do, how you operate, so that. You come across as it's a natural, um, a natural discussion with a vendor that it's not not a wooden read off the script. So take the scripts that Richard's presented today and just adapt them into your own dialogue and your own personality. I think that's really important. You've got to remember when you're sitting with a vendor or when you're actually looking at a property and going to go and try and and secure uh, a marketing uh, and to run a campaign. It can be a little bit daunting when you're actually thinking about, you know, I want to ask this uh, this vendor for five thousand or ten thousand dollars. Bear in mind, they are competitors are doing that all the time. Vendors are expecting us to do that because they're looking for a professional solution on marketing their properties. They're looking for great results, and and we've got to do a great job to do that. We need them to fund the marketing to get that better result. So, if we're not asking for it. Some of the vendors will be looking and saying, we're not doing a good enough job. Our expectations aren't high enough. So just bear that in mind. If, it, if you do think, get a bit nervous or a, a bit daunted at, at asking for, those, um, for that vendor funding. Um, just think about competitors that are out there doing it. And the last thing you want to do is open up the Saturday newspaper and see the property that you expected to get to market is in there with a, with a really big ad by somebody else. I think that winds us up for today. Um, we finish off the series next week with uh, Hayden Duncan, our CEO of Harcourts New Zealand. Uh, Hayden's an experienced auctioneer, he's a fantastic presenter, he's very entertaining to listen to, and I think it'll be great value. So uh, we look forward to you joining us next Thursday, which is um, uh, 11 o'clock New Zealand time. And of course, uh, if you, um, we'll send the links out to everybody who requested to log on online. So once again, thanks for your attendance today. Thanks, Richard, for making the trip. I know you flew in last night just specifically for today, so we really appreciate that. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you.